This is Dr. Sean Bishop, Superintendent of Harbor Beach Community Schools. You're watching Reading with Dr. Bishop. I brought another book for you tonight by Margie Pelletini, and the illustrations are by Jack E. Davis. The title of this book is Sweet Tooth. This is Stuart, your typical, average, everyday kid, except for one thing. Ah, <coughs> uh, yeah, that's it, all right. The molar in the back. You're probably saying, a tooth? What's a big deal about a tooth? And ordinarily, you'd be correct. That is, but this is no ordinary tooth. Uh-uh. This is Stuart's sweet tooth. One nagging, annoying, demanding, blah, 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 enough of that yucking. I need a candy bar, nah, ow. Very loud, sweet tooth. Does it have that gooey stuff in the middle? Cause it's gotta have that gooey stuff in the middle. There, said Stuart, through a smirched kisser of a gulp, satisfied, <clears throat> sweet. Yes, a tooth that wants what it wants, when it wants it, and it lets everybody know about it. Take, for example, two years ago at Cousin Charlotte's wedding. Stuart was on, the, on his very best behavior. His shoes were so shined, his bow tie straight, his hands were spotless. Grandfather had just lifted a glass to toast the bride and the groom when, I'm falling asleep here. Come on, move it along, ramps. Cut the cake. Time to cut the cake. I want to, the end honk with all of that icing. I don't know him, Mother said through a gritted smile. He doesn't belong to me, Dad said underneath his breath. Who is that boy, muttered Grandmother. Stuart wiped the pink rose from his lips. It's the sweet tooth. It was not a pretty picture. The tooth was no better behaved in school. Stuart had enough detention slips to wallpaper his room. Why, just two weeks ago... Who can tell me the capital of North Dakota? asked Mrs. Finnegan in geography class. Jelly beans, said a muffled voice from the back of the room. Did you say something, Stuart? asked Mrs. Finnegan. Licorice! Stuart, I'm afraid I can't hear your answer, said Mrs. Finnegan. Lollipops! You're going to have to speak up, Stuart. I'm dying for a couple of chocolate peanut butter cups, okay? That was detention slip number 432. But I'm telling you, it's not me, said Stuart, as he led, was led away to the principal's office. It's the tooth. The movies, you don't really want to go there, do you? Not with Stuart, anyway. Would somebody pass the gummy yummy already? Shh! Don't look at me, chewed Stuart. It's the tooth. And of course, there was the unforgettable Easter basket mishap. Now that was really ugly. That Sunday AM, the family woke up to find jelly beans littering the living room floor. Marshmallow chicks were missing. The trail of crumpled yellow foil wrappers led to one person and one person only. Oh, Stuart, cried a disappointed mother and father. I can't look, whispered Allison, closing her eyes. Those chocolate bunnies never had a chance, moaned Stuart, rubbing his belly aching stomach. It was the tooth. Hey, can we stop going down memory lane here and open up a bag of cookies? That's it. I've had enough, cried Stuart. Enough. I haven't had one. No more cookies, shouted Stuart. No more candy. No more cake. No more nothing. That's no more anything, said the tooth. And who do you think you are, kidding kid? Bring on those chocolate chips. Stuart sighed. The choi what choice did he have? He was a boy with one big sweet tooth. He tore open the bag, he grabbed one, then two, then three, four cookies. He opened his mouth. Come to Papa, shouted the tooth. Stuart stopped. What are you waiting for, kid? Come on, 
Cookie, 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 cookie. Stuart dropped the cookies, but not into his mouth. It's over, Tooth, he said suddenly, uh, suddenly determined Stuart. I'm cutting you off. Starting right now, it's cold turkey. Cold turkey? Eee! I hate cold turkey, unless you add a little cranberry sauce. Don't you hear me, Tooth, cried Stuart. I said it's over. From now on, there's nothing but a, a, a Stuart gulped. Healthy diet. Healthy kid. Say you don't mean it wailed the tooth, but Stuart meant it all right. He meant every word of it. Yes, it was trying. Yes, it was difficult. Okay, it was darn near impossible, but Stuart was staying strong. For the tooth, it was a different story. Peas? You're giving me peas? Little dried green veggie marbles? Broccoli? You're giving me shrub? That's not going to do it. Dessert? Where's the dessert? I'm begging you, when do I get to the good stuff? I can't hear you, said Stuart, putting down his fork and placing his hand over his ears. Strong. He stayed strong. Just one eensy teensy chocolate covered peanut before hitting the sack. How about it? A nosh, a nibble, a breath mint, something. Forget it, said Stuart, turning off the light. Strong, strong. Come on, what do you say? A spoonful of sugar, urged the tooth. As Stuart ate his cereal, Stuart shook his head. The tooth was losing its grip, and it knew it. A drop of chocolate milk, a measly little crumb bum crumb. No way, said Stuart. Very strong. Hey. Watch that toothbrush, shouted the tooth, and keep that tongue of yours out of the other side of your mouth, trying to wiggle me out, are you? Huh? Well, I'm not going for it, kid. I'm not going anywhere. Do you hear me? Do you hear me? Stuart brushed, and he flossed, and he gargled. Ugh, moaned the tooth weakly. He's not hearing me. I'll get you for this, kid. Stuart smiled. He was winning. Oh, yes, he was winning. And three days passed. The tooth was quiet, very quiet, almost too quiet. But Stuart wasn't thinking tooth. He was thinking baseball. It's the biggest game of the season, and bottom of the ninth, and Stuart was at the plate. Runners were at second and third, and there were two outs and two strikes. The crowd was on their feet. The game was on the line, and Stewart's te team was down to one run. The pitcher went into the windup. There was a hush over the stands. A big, fat fastball was heading over the plate. It was all up to Stewart. And then, boy, could I go for a hunk of, of bubble gum right now! Swing, swish! <laughs> Strike three! Yelled the umpire. You're out! Gotcha, said the tooth. Now you got to get me some goodies. I'll get you goodies, mumbled Stuart, dropping his bat. Home he marched into the kitchen straight to the refrigerator. He yanked open the door and rustled through the vegetable bin. He flung lettuce. He tossed tomatoes. He hurled a head of cauliflower. And then he pulled out a carrot. Rat, that's right, a carrot. It's over for you, tooth, announced Stuart defiantly lifting the carrot over his head. What are you doing with that? said his wide-eyed sister. Stuart grinned and he opened his mouth wide, very wide. Kid, no, not the carrot, not the carrot. Yes, the carrot, shouted Stuart. No, kid, no. Allison covered her eyes. I think I'm too young to watch this. Closer and closer, and then crunch. Ah, ah, so long, sweet world. What a way to go, done in by an orange vegetable. Stuart rubbed his jaw. He stared at the carrot, and the tooth, it was over. 
What's going to happen to it? asked Allison as she followed her brother upstairs to the bedroom. Stuart put the molar under his pillow and then he took a look at his sister. Who knows, he said with a big smile. That's a problem for the tooth fairy now. cried a baby tooth. Woo! yelped a canine. Please be quiet, said the wisdom tooth. I'm trying to read. Pipe down, wise guy. What do you, what does a sweet tooth have to do to get an ice cream sundae around here with hot fudge and throw in some sprinkles while you're at it? The tooth fairy, fairy smiled. Rotten teeth. And that story was Sweet Tooth by Margie Palladini. Thank you very much.